so much for being here. Today we're going to talk about the thing that I have just cut off the loom. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and we are going to talk about the how drill project that has just come off the loom. These are a series of dish towels or tea towels that are based off of the design by Ariana Funk. She's a Swedish weaver and she designed a project for Just Yarns a couple of years ago. There was a whole weave along around it and so you can find on Instagram tons of super inspiring photos of this particular project. I chose to use some different colors and things like that and it all kind of came out of one of the last Taking Back Friday episodes I did where I was showing some of the Venn cotton that we've brought into Sweet Georgia. So we have all these colors of cotton and all these possibilities. And so I decided to pull some together to make this project. Now, what is half drill? What is this weave structure that all of these dish towels are based on? Now, Ariana Funk, in her pattern, she describes Halvdrill as a simplified overshot structure. Um, you can also find she's recently released a new book called To Weave the Swedish Way. And uh, in here, she also has another project that uses the same weave structure, Halvdrill. Um, and again, she describes it as simplified overshot. So I have heard of other weavers describe Halvdrill at uh, as being related to summer and winter. And I can understand that it has a little bit of that summer and winter effect. So summer and winter being like summer side would be the light colored side. And when you flip it over to the winter side, it would be the dark side. So it's a similar thing that happens here. If you look at this one section, that's mostly light and then you turn it over to the other side and it's mostly dark. So it's got a little bit of that two faced appearance to it. So that's maybe why it's a little bit related to summer and winter. It's also because it is a block weave structure. It has got these floats that are tied down very similar in some ways to summer and winter and things like that. So when you look at the weaving drafts, you can see that there are relations but they're not exactly the same. Now, while this is not overshot, I can see how it's similar to overshot. It's got the same sort of um, sequence where you put in one pattern pick and then you put in one tabby pick and then another pattern pick and then a tabby pick. So you're alternating a pattern weft and a tabby, pattern weft and tabby. And so theoretically, if you cut out all of the pattern picks, then what you would be left with is plain weave cloth underneath, just like Overshot. But with Overshot, you are creating these patterns using um, twill as an underlying sort of structure. It, with this half drill, it is not twill that's going on back here, uh, but there are two blocks. There's an A block and a B block. This section here is one block. This section here is a second block. And this section here is the A block again. So it's A, B, A, it's like that. Now in Ariana's original pattern, she used two colors for the warp. She used black and white. So black was these uh, stripes, these dark stripes here would have been black in her pattern. And so in my case, I just wanted to try to experiment with more colors because I had all these color options. So I wanted to put in some more colors. So I put in some of this olive green, kind of a brassy green color, and then this sort of mustard gold color on this side, and then a raspberry color in the middle here. And then using that same combination for weft colors, but then also introducing a couple of other colors as well. So you can see this is the first towel that I made. And so I was experimenting with the shapes of blocks and trying to figure out how to change the sizes of blocks and all these kinds of things. It's not at all symmetrical. It was just very much a, an experimentation. And then you can see here, this is a much more, this is the second towel. This is a much more rhythmic use of color. So it's going through three colors, uh, just adding in this blue kind of color. It's like a little bit of a robin's egg blue, adding that color in here um, and then cycling through changing the sizes of those blocks. It's very, very flexible, this pattern. You can just change colors whenever you feel like it. Um, in this case, I wanted to add in only berry colors. So like kind of rosy, strawberry, purples, uh, magentas, all of those kinds of colors. Just one towel specifically for berry colors. Here, kind of playing with little mini stripes and things like that, trying to alternate change up the rhythm of those colors and applying those colors in there. And so for each one of these, I think I did three sequences to make these small little stripes. This one, big blocks of big color. 
The yarn that's actually specified in Ariana's pattern is Duet for the weft yarn, for the pattern weft. And so I did put a bit of that Duet in here and it creates a really, really lovely texture um, because it's linen and cotton. It's kind of got this duotone feel to it, really adds a lot of depth. I'm really interested to see how this will all wash up once I actually go to wet finish the cloth. And this is the last towel that I did. It's got kind of a rainbow effect to it now, now that I look at it, um, but I like it. So I can absolutely see how you could go through and create so many different kinds of color blocks and patterns in this. But you can see here that I could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different warp stripes. I could have done nine different warp colors and then created all sorts of different blocks. Or I could also take a look at the weaving draft and adapt the threading so that I change the, where the blocks sit. So I could make this entire thing asymmetrical. Right now it's very, very symmetrical, but I could change the block so that maybe B block this, this, maybe I change it so that this B block in the middle is over here, or maybe I make it bigger. Maybe I make it two thirds of the project instead of one third of the project. I could do all sorts of different things with this kind of threading in this structure now. If you are at all curious about weaving overshot or getting into the rhythm of working with two different shuttles and one tabby shuttle and one pattern shuttle, I would highly encourage you to give this pattern a try. It is very, very approachable. It's very easy. I actually love that the draft is written in a Swedish format where um, you're weaving from the bottom up. The weaving draft is drawn from the bottom up. And um, I, I feel like it really helps understand what's happening on the loom as you're weaving it. In order to weave this project, all you need is a four shaft loom and four treadles. It's actually quite approachable. In order to sort of experiment with the different colored blocks and things like that, I did try doing things like um, doing clasped weft. And so I would put in one color on one side and another color on the other side, clasp the two in the middle, and then try to make them line up with one of the columns. And so I'd have like one color on one side and another color on the other side. But I didn't really like how that appeared. It just looked like there was too many things going on at the same time. So I ended up ripping all of that out, unweaving all of that and then starting again. And so all of this is just single weft in, in each shed. I do love how the way that the floats are tied down creates little diamond shapes. It looks like little elongated diamond shapes. And so it has very much of this kind of mid-century modern feel. So I feel like depending on what colors you choose, depending on how um, symmetrical or asymmetrical you happen to make your design, you can create something that has a very modern feel to it, um, very contemporary. All depends on colors and how you design where the patterns go. Now, I did recently have a question from one of the members of our School of Sweet Georgia, and she has just finished weaving her first set of cotton dish towels. And she wrote me a message and she said, Hi, Felicia, I just put my first set of cotton towels into the washing machine. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. They have been hemstitched and will have fringe, so I cut them apart, but I left all my little yarn tails and I'm hoping that I won't have an unraveled mess once the cycle is done. How do you finish your cotton towels? So I've brought two kitchen towels to show you. I have used both of these towels for a long, long time. This one for a number of years and this one for maybe five months since the holidays. Uh, but basically this pattern here, this was a Liz Gibson pattern from her Rigid Heddle weaving book. And I originally wove this on a Rigid Heddle loom. And uh, it is a two cotton, it was doubled up, it is beautiful. But basically what I do when I do cotton towels is I will weave in two picks of a contrasting color where I want to cut my towels. So I am measuring the towels as I'm weaving them on the loom. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut these apart right where this line is, and then I'm gonna run it through my serger, or you could use a zigzag on your sewing machine, just to clean up the edges and make sure that they're sealed off. And then I'm gonna to toss all of them into the washing machine and then run them just as I would when I'm washing my towels. So once those are out of the washing machine, then I'll dry them, and then I will go ahead and fold over the edges, iron them, fold it over again, and then I sew it down. It's kind of like a rolled hem. So I do this for all of the kitchen towels because I just think I treat my towels pretty rough. We just, we toss them in the washer and dryer 
all the time and so they have to withstand that wear and tear so personally for me i would not have fringe on my towels because i would probably destroy the fringe and then it would start to come apart but i do um this this rolled hem technique so you can see there and this is served pretty well over the past couple of months this is a short towel because it is the leftovers of <laughs> another warp where i gave away all of the other towels but uh yeah i still love this little piece now one thing i want to mention about this particular pattern is that in the pattern instructions it did not say anything about floating selvages however <laughs> I started weaving initially with no floating selvages and I was trying to figure out how to make that work. So maybe you can see here, up here there's a section with no floating selvages and you can see sort of how the weft doesn't actually catch on the edges and it just looks like it's floating in the middle and sitting in the middle. And well, I didn't particularly like how that looked and so I added floating selvages to my piece uh, in order to catch the pattern weft at the edges of the cloth. Now you can choose to do this or not do this. I experimented with it again at the end of the uh, loom because, well, basically my floating selvage on the left side broke off and I thought it was not worth it to go back and reattach it. So I just didn't have a floating selvage at the end. And so you can see the pattern weft does not come all the way to the edge of the cloth, but instead there's almost like a selvage that is being formed of just plain weave from the, the base yarn or the base cotton yarn. Um, so you can kind of experiment with that and see if you like it with floating selvages or without floating selvages. It's your choice. So you might notice that in the actual pattern, um, the kit or the pattern specifies making three different towels. Um, the warp length here was 3.3 uh, yards. I maxed out my small warping board at home that I have. It's a shacked 4.5 yard warping board. So I just maxed out that whole warping board, four and a half yards, and I was able to get six towels out of that. Each towel was approximately 22 inches on the loom. And uh, yeah, I'm surprised at how many towels I was able to get out of it. I weave until the very, very end. I just continue to weave until you can weave no more. You can see just plain weave right at the end. I wasn't sure how long I would get. And plus, it's very therapeutic to just weave plain weave. Okay, so I am gonna go and cut these apart, serge the ends, and then wash them all and see how the texture changes after it goes into the wash. And then I will have some new kitchen towels. So as I have been weaving on this fanny loom for the past couple of weeks, I have really been thinking about it as my therapy loom. Like I sit here and I will just throw the shuttle and weave and weave and weave and it is so relaxing. I really want this loom to be the kind of loom where I just put on projects and just enjoy what I'm making and just not have to worry about anything, stress about anything. This is my therapy loom. <laughs> So that is it for today. I hope that you will leave me a comment and let me know if you have tried this half drill technique before, if you have made these very towels, what your experience was, did you enjoy it? What colors did you use? I would love to hear about that. And also, if you have any tips about how you finish cotton towels, I would love to hear as well, because this is just the way that I've done it. It's not the only way. I encourage you to let me know about how you do it. Thank you so much for being here today. We come here on Wednesdays to talk about weaving and we come here on Fridays to talk about stuff to do with the fiber arts. So I hope that you will join us again in the next one. All right, bye for now.